Hello everyone and welcome to The Vortex, where lies and falsehoods are trapped and exposed. I'm Michael Voris. Doesn't take much to know the big scandals in the church, especially surrounding the whole gay thing in the clergy. Those scandals, because of the big names involved, break out of the bubble, the church bubble, into the mainstream press. Scandals like McCarrick and his career of sexual assault. The Pennsylvania Grand Jury reported four summers ago. Cardinal Dolan bestowing his blessing on the gay marriage advocates in the St. Patrick's Day Parade, all of those by way of example. Those are big names, big events, and they generate great big headlines. However, those are not the business as usual cases we here at Church Milton are made aware of frequently. While we obviously covered those big stories, there are quite a few that slip past the Marxist media, except for a brief mention locally. For example, right here in Detroit, the recently appointed Auxiliary Bishop Paul Fitzpatrick Russell has been named in a lawsuit with pretty damning allegations. Those allegations are when he was a priest in the Archdiocese of Boston, he sexually assaulted a 12-year-old boy more than two dozen times while stationed at St. Mary of the Sacred Heart Parish in Lynn. But as Archbishop Alan Vigneron and his corrupt chancery prove time and again, there is a massive double standard always at play. When the allegations against Bishop Russell came out the other day, Vigneron rushed to his defense and permitted Russell to defend himself by issuing a denial through the proven liar communications director, Ned McGrath. McGrath said, quote, Archbishop Russell is shocked and saddened by the claims that have been made. He states that the allegations are totally without merit that his conscience is perfectly clear. Okay, well that seems perfectly fine. You should allow an accused to go on the record and deny the charges or defend them if they're defendable. But contrast that with the way Vigneron trashed Father Edward Peron a couple summers back when charges of sexual assault were leveled against him. The same archdiocese under the same duplicitous archbishop and the same corrupt chancery staff denied their own priest the opportunity to deny the charges or defend himself. In fact, in a glaring display of malice, actual malice, it was later proven that Vigneron's hitman, Monsignor Michael Bugarin, had actually lied, manufactured, fabricated the entire case against Father Perone. Bugarin demanded an alleged victim accused Perone of sodomy against him a charge that alleged victim flat out denied repeatedly. Yet even knowing the charges were invented against him, he was still denied the ability to respond publicly and deny them. A press release was issued and with no denial from Perone in it because it was not permitted. The assumption people would make then is that because after all, he must be guilty because why wouldn't an innocent man deny the charges? What Vigneron did not allow to be told is that Perone was never given the opportunity to deny them. They just published a press release and made it seem like he was guilty. In the end, Vigneron's malice was defeated in Rome in a rare canon law victory for a priest over his bishop. On top of that, he even won a $125,000 civil settlement against the cop who cooperated with the archdiocese to defame him. But that humiliation infuriated the vindictive Vigneron who refused to allow himself to be defeated. He brought up local ecclesiastical charges of disobedience against Perone, who was civilly suing Monsignor Bergarin like he'd done for the cop for defamation. He had ordered Perone to drop the suit and for a long while Perone refused, thus bringing on the phony charge of disobedience, as though a priest has no right to defend his good name in the face of known manufactured charges. Eventually, Father Perone complied, worn down by Vigneron and his corrupt chancery, in exchange for being able to offer mass publicly again, with permission, of course, each time. So a priest, Father Paul Russell, raised to the level of bishop and brought to Detroit to presumably take over for Vigneron when he departs next year, he gets to defend himself. But a good priest with no record of anything 
fighting what the entire chancery knew were phony charges, gets no opportunity to defend himself through the official means. Bah, but who says there's corruption in the church? God love you. I'm Michael Voris.